Okay, cheerleaders, ready?
crossroads? Why are we talking about a renovation? But when you ask the question about our campus, do our buildings allow us to make disciples, you come up with a mixed answer. And I want us to remember why we're talking about this project tonight. It is not because we want a shiny new building. It's not because we're in competition with anybody in the community. Uh, it's not because it's long overdue, even though it is. So why are we talking about it? First and foremost, our mission is to make disciples of this and future generations. And we have a facility that in some ways no longer enables us to do that as well as we could. Does our campus facilitate the making of disciples? Not as well as it could with some changes so that we might reach others for Christ. But with some major changes, uh, we will not only be preparing this facility for today and for the immediate future, but for generations to come. So I am excited about what we're doing. I'm going to call on uh, Bill Grimes to come and share with us uh, a little bit more detail of uh, the assessment and the process and what the changes are going to look like a little bit. The project narrative uh, provide adequate storage for the entire campus, provide a more secure, better organized children's department, and update the building utilities such as <coughs> HVAC, plumbing, and electric. To provide welcome centers for both the children's wing and the activity center. Renovate and update building finishes such as flooring, paints, and ceilings. Replace doors and door hardwares as required for function and security. And review our energy use and recommend methods, methods for improvements. Then we get into our children's wing, the first one. What we want to do is provide welcome centers for both the children's wing and the activity center. Renovate and update building finishes such as flooring, paints, ceilings. Replace doors, door hardware as required for function and security. And then also to review our energy use. This, this is what our children's wing entrance looks like right now. And on the next slide, you will see the layout that we have proposed for the children's wing. We come in making changes making additions. And then the next one is to discuss that it could look like, just to give you an idea. And then the next is the activity center. You can see this is this is what it looked like before. And then we had the drawing of the you know proposed activity center on the next slide. Next slide would be what it could look like. Because here again, this is just you know some of the suggestions that we've talked about. The next slide would be the education wing and fellowship hall. And here again, the first one would be the uh, drawings down the downstairs. This would include the Patsy Stewart class and also the Wesley class and the uh, fellowship class. Wesley class has agreed to move down out of their main floor. Uh, and then the next drawing would be the, the education wing. This is upstairs here. And then the next drawing would be basically the, uh, the upstairs also in the music area. And then we've got the remainder of the adult classes. And then the last drawing be on the ground floor where the offices are, where the uh, and then where the Wesley class would be converted to the children's fellowship hall. Don and I give on a weekly basis to the operating budget, and the reason we do that goes back to several years when Mr. B.I. Thornton made a statement, a stewardship statement, that on each Sunday morning when he got up and signed a check put in the collection plate that it was a godly event to him. And since that time, we have both had that thought. And you know, when we do that each Sunday, that is what we have in mind on our, on our giving. We have so much going on, so much excitement. 
And uh, what we want to do on, on the budget campaign is continue this, you know, continue to grow and uh, uh, show who we are in the community. We supported the renovation of the sanctuary, the renovation or the uh, construction of the activity center. And now, we, you know, we fully support and will pledge three years on the upcoming campaign. Because we both love this church, and you know, and what is going on, the people we have, the children coming up, and thinking about what the future generation will hold for us. We, we ask for prayerful consideration on this, and just let's get together and get this done. Inside your bag, you will find a piece of paper with a cotton ball, which has a quote taken from the booklet. Regarding fundraising for building the original church circa 1911, one of the most unusual methods for raising money came from the sale of cotton. Mr. J.S. Page planted cotton designated part of the acreage for women of the church to pick. In addition, Ms. Pate gave cotton seed to the ladies of the church so that they could plant these, this cotton in their flower beds and gardens. Old Timer said you could spot the Methodist homes by the cotton growing in their yards. <laughs> <laughs> this was picked, bailed, and sold for the church. Charles Miller has graciously consented to follow suit in the example set by the Old Testament. He has left out several dry corners of cotton that he didn't pick for the ladies of the church to go ahead and <laughs> Whether a little or a lot, we are all called to do our part. 
The last thing in the goodie bag will be a magnet that's got our logo and our home is built. I hope you'll put this magnet in a very visible place, somewhere that you'll see it for the next three years to remind you of your capital campaign and your financial commitment. Think about the commitment that was made back in 1911 and the impact that it's had on your life. Let's pull together as a team and make this project happen. While the choir will sing this, um, and it is a bit faster paced than what you're used to, uh, we want to invite you all to sing along with the choir and the band as well.
And I so appreciate being asked to come and participate today. And uh, I just want to say to Dr. Charles Lewis and his group and his team and what a, what a great effort you've made and how, what hard work you've done. I think this group just should really be able to give the volunteers a big hand. Would you please? Yeah.
we are joined together in the communion of saints with people from the last 128 years who had a vision for this. What we see right here, right now. Us being the church. And 75 people 128 years ago had that vision to call this place Ordeal First United Methodist Church. And we come from all different parts of this community, from all around, all different walks of life, but we are one in Christ because our hope is built in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Realize that this morning you are touching a blessing in the hand that you are holding because we are a part of the body of Christ together and we have a marvelous, God-given opportunity to be the people like those 75 were so long ago, to be those same people for future generations. I hope that you will pray about it. We had the, the prayer walk yesterday uh, and folks were involved in that. We have the prayer calendar for you to participate in and, and praying through the whole month between now and Commitment Sunday. Uh, we have a prayer vigil coming up on December 3rd which I believe is a Wednesday, and that will be an all-day uh, prayer vigil the week before Commitment Sunday. We're asking you to pray. This is a God-sized vision, a God-sized dream, a God-sized project, and none one of us can accomplish it on our own. And together, if we yield to Christ, it can be accomplished, but only with Christ's blessing. So pray, pray, pray pray for what God wants to do through us for this generation and for future generations. Will you pray with me? God, be glorified. You have done amazing things. In 128 years, I, I can't even imagine that the, the people who started this thing would have even conceived of where we are today. And yet your hand has brought us here. And Lord, as they could not imagine this campus and this facility and the blessings and the impact that this church would have. Likewise, we cannot see and imagine how great your name will be made because of what happens here in this place. Lord, our desire is to bring you honor and glory, to bring people into your kingdom in this generation, in this community, around the world, and in future generations for this to be a lighthouse, a beacon of hope, a place where the gospel message goes forth. So enable us to be your church. Truly fill us with your spirit, that we might catch your spirit, and we might be your church. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and all God's people said.